Hey fam, and God bless you. I'm excited that you could join us today. We are Rock West, the family church with excellence. If you find yourself in the Nairobi area, come out to Westlands at Novin Peak Hotel. We have our services here every Sunday at 10 a.m. without fail. We have, ev we have something for every age group. If you have kids, let them come out to our Sunday school class. If you have teens, come out. We have a great teens program. If you have youth in your home, come and let's, let them come together and discuss youth things and youth issues. We are ready and prepared for you. Our main services begin at 10 a.m. to 12.30 every Sunday. Hey, listen, the word of the Lord is real and active in your life. Today, as you listen in, listen with an open heart. I know that the Lord will speak to you. The Holy Spirit is at work, and I know that someone's life is about to change, and someone's destiny is about to take a whole new tangent. God bless you and keep you. Stay tuned to the Word. Last week we talked about the church, and uh, we say the church of Jesus Christ is... One called out by Jesus himself, amen, is founded upon a rock. That the true church is founded upon the rock. And the Bible says that Jesus is that rock. The rock that the builders rejected. Jesus is the rock that the church is built on. I want us to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'll use the amplified version. From verse 16. The Bible says, do you not know and understand that you, the church, are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells permanently in you, collectively and individually? If anyone destroys the temple of God, corrupting it with false doctrine, God will destroy the destroyer for the temple of God is holy, sacred, and that it is what you are that you are the temple of God. That you are the temple of God. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, I am the temple of God. Acts chapter 20 from verse 28 says, and this is a slightly longer portion of scripture, uh, from verse 28, take care and be on guard for yourselves and for the whole flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, to shepherd, tend, to feed, guide the church of God which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I am gone, false teachers like ferocious wolves will come among you, not sparing the flock. Even from among your own selves, men will rise speaking perverse and distorted things to draw away disciples after themselves as their followers. Therefore, be continually alert, remembering that there are three, that for the three years, night and day, I did not stop admonishing and advising each one of you with tears. And now I commend you to God, placing you in his protective, loving care. And I commend you to the word of his grace, and the counsel, uh, the counsel and promises of his unmerited favor. His grace is able to build you up, to give you the rightful inheritance among those who are sanctified, that is, among those who are set apart for God's purpose. All believers, I had no desire for anyone's silver or gold or expensive clothes, you know personally that these hands ministered to my own needs, working in manual labor, and to those of the people who are with me in everything I showed you by example, that by working hard in this way, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, it is more blessed and brings greater joy to give than to receive. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that you do you not know and understand that you, the church, are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. 
if anyone destroys the temple of God by corrupting it by false doctrine. I think we left somewhere there. Let me tell you. False doctrine is the only thing that can corrupt the temple of God. What is false doctrine? It is teaching that does not agree with the word of God. It is any belief or any pattern of thinking, of doing things that has been accepted that is not in line with the word of God. Praise the Lord. You see, you are the church. But anything you believe that does not agree with the word of God, it perverts how you perceive God. It perverts how you worship God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because many people, based on their perspective, the glasses that they look at the word of God, it perverts how they perceive God. That's why we have one God, one teaching by Christ Jesus, one way to salvation, but many people have many different versions. Not that all of them are wrong, but they are based upon how you perceive and look at the word of God. Praise the Lord. And he says, the Lord will destroy anyone who destroys the church. Anyone who introduces anything that is not of God. It is important for you as a child of God to ask yourself, the things you believe, are they in scripture? Are they scriptural? Praise the Lord. Because many times, people believe things based on their perspective. Today, we live in a society that loves personalizing everything. Everything has to work for me. Praise the Lord. You know, the way the pastor preached, it didn't work for me. Praise the Lord. The way that scripture was explained, it was not working for me. It is not supposed to work for you. It is the way the Lord has said. Period. Me has become a God in today's society. Is one of the enemies of faith is me. You know, the way I perceive, the way I want. Why didn't they sing that song the way I like it? Praise the Lord. The way he spoke, I didn't like that. Hear what the Lord is speaking, though you might not like the container. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, when, G when God sent the word of the Lord in Nineveh, you know people repented because of how Jonah looked. Praise the Lord. People, I am, I, this is my, I believe people repented because of how Jonah looked. When Jonah was sent, he was okay, but he decided to go and do his stuff. And sometimes the people who are speaking to you, they are bent like that because God has bent them that way. You know, the church complained about Paul. Why? Because Paul wrote very well with authority with boldness. Man, so they thought, when Paul comes, he will be this guy, shoulders squared, tall, standing above everyone. When he speaks, his voice is going to sound certainly like it is drawing attention. Praise the Lord. You know those people, maybe I don't have that kind of voice, eh? You know there are people who walk in and they're like, praise the Lord. This morning I had the Lord speak to me. And all of you are like, my God. <laughs> But when I walk in and I say, God spoke to me, all of you are looking at me like, ah, pass it to me, Kuzoya. Let me tell you, Paul, they complained. Why? He had, his eyes were not that good. Praise the Lord. He was writing in prison cells. No light. But he wrote. In fact, some people used to write for him. Maybe he couldn't even see properly. So when they experienced Paul, they were like, hmm. The letters are convincing, comprehensive, powerful. But the man, and let me tell you, the man was teaching accurate doctrine. That's the most important thing. It doesn't matter if the voice was low, crooked, with some accent. Eh? It doesn't matter. But the, he was ministering the word of God. It had life. That's why Paul in 1 Corinthians says, I did not come to you with the wisdom of men, with all authority, 
with the gift of oratory because he could have practiced. Anyone can go and practice how to speak. There are classes. But he saw that was not important. The most important thing was I speak by the Spirit that your faith, that your faith may be based on the word of God and not the wisdom of men. Let me ask you, some of us, our faith is based on the wisdom of men. There is a possibility that your faith is based on the wisdom of men. I want to ask you, what is that faith that you carry? That truth, is it corrupted? Are you sure it is the genuine, unadulterated word of the living God? Because that's what will set you apart. That is the only thing that can corrupt the church. Praise the Lord. In the book of Acts, he says, take care and be on guard for yourselves and for the whole flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you. He's speaking here to ministers. The Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers. Let me tell you, when you walk into a church, it is important. Now I'm talking about a physical church. You said you're a member of Ruach West or you're a member of whatever congregation. He says that flock has been appointed by the Holy Spirit. Why are you led by the Spirit of God here? You see, I told you me. Me these days helps people choose churches. Ah, mm -hmm. And do you know where the Bible says people choose the people who speak to them? It says in the last days there shall come men who shall not be able to withstand the truth. They shall gather for themselves men who speak the things that they desire. That tickle them. So if we preach something and it is not good for you, man, it is good for you. If you feel like it is hurting you, man, it is working on you. Praise the Lord. Don't go where I, you know, we all, you know, the problem of today is choice. We all of us on YouTube or whatever channel, you listen to the guy, you look at the message. Ah, that one is how to walk in righteousness. Ah, I don't feel that one. <laughs> Fifteen breakthroughs on how to overcome. Aye, uh, me, I want that one. Hmm? How to attract favor. That's the one you choose. But the, you, you're choosing titles, but you don't subject yourself to the word the bible says the spirit of god is the one that has appointed you to be a flock has appointed me to be a minister over this flock Amen. praise the lord it was not a choice no god said pastor don pastor Iganjo, you guys go to our request that is where i have appointed for you and then he sent it to you that I want to be a member of this church. So what happens is the spirit has appointed a flock and he says to the shepherds, tend, feed, and guide. You see, you can't be guided if you're not willing to be guided. Praise the Lord. Even animals, you, tie, you tether them and you direct them. But if the donkey refuses to go, what do you do? It is the story of... Uh, the prophet, eh, Balaam, he, had a, he, he was directing the donkey where to go, but the donkey saw something he didn't see. And it refused to move. Let me tell you, you have to be available to be guided, to be fed. That's why it is important you belong to a local congregation. These people who jump from church to church every Sunday, yeah, it's like, how many churches have you attended this year? I have gone to like 15. You have a problem. You can't be fed. And it means you, there are some things you can't digest. So you go to where you feel today, this one, this one might be speaking something good. You look at the poster in the middle of the week. What are they preaching about? Mm, 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 mm. That someone looks good. Let me go here. Praise the Lord. He says, the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers. So if the Holy Spirit appoints pastors, the Holy Spirit appoints people, the congregation. It is the Spirit of God that draws men. I told you the church of Jesus Christ is built by Christ. And he says, and this is the statement I want us to pick, the church of God which is bought with his own blood. This church does not belong to a man. It belongs to Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The church belongs to Anywhere men own the church. This is my church. Be careful, man. 
you might be living under a man, not under Christ. Praise the Lord. He blood bought it. Let me tell you, the Bible says it is very rare for even a friend to die for a friend. Let me tell you, it is even rare for a family member to die for a family member. Praise the Lord. Very rare. You know, movies show us people jump before bullets and all of us think, ah, goof, dying for someone else is easy. You check in real life how many people died for another person. That's, they said, we are shooting you. No, someone said, no, 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 shoot me. Very rare. For Jesus to die for you, it's a price. It's a price. It's a heavy price. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. The church is blood bought. That's why we can't have campaigns in church. It is blood bought. That's why we can't have people who are social climbing in church. This is not that institution. You can do that in your work office or your workplace. But in the house of the Lord, it is blood bought, blood washed. It is kept by God himself. And he says something. I know, verse 29, after I am gone, false teachers like ferocious wolves will come in among you. There are those that come. False teachers. Among you, there are those that come. Not sparing the flock, even from among your own selves, men will rise, speaking perverse and distorted things, to draw away disciples after themselves as their followers. Let me tell you, church, we are not trying to create our own followers. That's not the church of Jesus Christ. Individuals who are trying to create followers in the church, they are off. The church of Jesus Christ is serving one master. That is Jesus Christ. And this, Paul here is telling them, this is some of the things that will be bad that will happen in the church. Today, there are false prophets, false teachers, people who walk in, and they draw people to themselves. Let me tell you, if you want to know a true man of God, they point you to Jesus. Not themselves. Anyone who points you to themselves, watch them carefully. It's the scripture. Am I the one speaking? The Bible says, watch them carefully. A true man of God points you to Jesus. If you come and every time I'm, I pray for you, I want you to pray for yourself. Praise the Lord. I know we have a dependency mindset in the church of God. We want pastor pray. First for me. Then I want to come and collect. <laughs> Let me come and collect. I want to collect the blessing. Pastor, you know, there's something that is disturbing me. Can you lay your hand on me? Before I lay your hand, my hand on you, let's pray. Fast with me. Let me not fast for you. Praise the Lord. Any man who points always to themselves, there is a problem. <coughs> God appoints men. But God appoints men to point to him. We are signboards that this is the Lord. This is the way to salvation. This is how you get access. This is where your promises are kept. We cannot keep your promise, the promises of God in your life. So if you have a dependency mindset as an individual, you're always waiting for a man of God to speak. You know, I tell people, before anyone prophesies to me, I already know. I wake up in the morning and I know today there is a, someone is going to give me a word. And every word they give me is a confirmation. Praise the Lord. You guys were here when we were being told about a baby. Do you know how many times you have heard that word? That was not the first time. We've been refusing. Pastor Don was the first person to prophesy to us. Said, I see a baby. We were like, Lord, no. Father, we thank you. We have two. We are enough. We are enough. We we're like, Pasi, do you think maybe you guys want the baby. Can we send back to sender? <laughs> but you see, if it is the word of the Lord, it's a confirmation. But before anyone prophesied, when we sat down and spoke with my wife and we were like, let's plan our family. We ended up with three. But after the experience of the first one, we were like, I know we can't. Hey, three. Hey, let's reduce that number. I was, no, she was like, no, three. Me, I was like, no, not three. Hey, then, 
We got the second one, even how she was like, even now I agree. Let's do two. So I was like, Father, I have won. But you see, the intention of the Lord was already revealed. We were just trying to have our own. We, we, are, we are still in the process of, of receiving the word of God. <laughs> My point is, we knew it was not a surprise. Anytime a man of God prophesies to you and it's the first time you have heard it, something is wrong with you, not the man of God. Either or the word is fake. Praise the Lord. I can't be telling. You see, God is not a gossiper. Do you, what is gossip? Let's start from there. Let me come closer to your homestead. What is gossip? What is gossip? Gossip is when I discuss with my wife about Pastor Solomon. What I can't tell him. Or what I am not willing to tell him. Or what I can't say in front of him. Praise the Lord. That is the realm of gossip. So, if God is speaking about me with someone else, and he has not told me, what is that? No, no, no. I want us to be very clear. What is that? So, either I have refused to hear the word of the Lord until he has to send a prophet. Balaam, Balaam, the Lord spoke to him, but he had hardened his heart until his donkey spoke to him. Praise the Lord. Sometimes God will use donkeys to speak to you, to prophesy to you, because you have hard hearts that you're not willing to hear his word. But you see, not that the Lord had not spoken. So it means you have a problem, or the man of God prophesied something that is wrong. Praise the Lord. I want us to be bold. You know, we are so timid as Christians. Me, I have been prophesied to by someone, and I told them, no. Life, no. Because no, I was like, I don't relate with that word. No. I, until, until they had to stop and say, excuse. You don't agree? I said, I don't agree completely. In front of everyone. They were like, oh my God. Okay, can, I, can you allow me to tell you what the Spirit is leading me to tell you? And they spoke, and I was like, hmm. You know what? It's okay, finish. And I left and I forgot that word, but that word was fulfilled. <laughs> it was fulfilled, word for word. God had to remind me many years later. And I suffered for not listening. But you see, I had stuck to something and I was not willing to move. That's why I couldn't hear the word of God. Not that the prophet was wrong. Praise the Lord. You, you have to, even when you are wrong, at least be convicted in your wrong. <laughs> you know, God, God loves people like, you know, Paul, Paul was wrong. He was persecuting the church with conviction. He was like, stole him. Like, Give me your coats. I will hold them for you. That's why when Paul follows Jesus, it's with a conviction. Stoned, crushed. As in, how many of you can be whipped several times, stoned several times for the gospel, and you still continue to preach it? Meet with people, they say, mm, your letters were good, but the way you look, the way you sound, I, we, are not, we don't even believe. Are you the one who wrote them? But he still preached the gospel. Praise the Lord. He had a conviction. You know, the problem we have is we want to be, you know, we don't want to offend. Unfortunately, the gospel offends. I'll tell you, that it's either you are right or you are wrong. There is no in between. You know, we have this key lukewarmness. Even in our politics, we, are, we want to be lukewarm. We don't want to offend. Let me tell you, you are right or you are wrong. If you are wrong, accept. If you are right, you are right. Are we together? This thing of being in between, we have to please everyone, it's not of God. Even God says, I hate lukewarm things. It's either you're hot or you're cold. Period. At least God loves people he knows. This one is not for me. Period. This one has to be the gospel. The light of God has to enter. But these guys who are like, you know I'm for you. You're, ah, I'm not for you. Hey, you know I'm for you. He is confused. Praise the Lord. Am I making sense? So the church of God is blood bought. 
And he says, you, this is why you need discernment. The church of God operates by discernment. You, you need discernment. Let me tell you, discernment can't be taught. Praise the Lord. We can't lay our hands on you for you to get discernment. Discernment comes as, ma- as the more you spend time with God. Let me tell you, how do bank tellers tell fake money versus real money? They spend time. They touch it. They have become so familiar with the right thing that when you introduce the wrong thing, they touch it, they say, mm, that paper, something is off. The weight is not right. The print is not, something is off. That's how they tell. The same way, that's how discernment works. You spend time with God until you can perceive things. You can enter a place and say something is wrong, but I don't even know what it is. But your spirit has sensed something is. But some of us are in that sensing business, but it's not the word of God. It's I'm sensing something is wrong. Because the things are not going the way you like. Praise the Lord. Even from among you, the men will arise. Speaking perverse, distorted things to draw away disciples to themselves as their followers. Watch out for people who won't create factions. These ones are for me. These ones are for Cairo. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't be there and here. Those people, that's not the spirit of the Lord. Paul is telling them things that will come that are not right. Verse 32, he says, and now I commend you to God, placing you in his protective, loving care. This is Paul who has been preaching the word of God. He says, I commend you to God. This is what we do. This church belongs to God. We are presenting you to the Lord. Paul is saying, we might not meet again. And because we might not meet again, I might not be there to correct you. But God, I commend you to God because God is able to direct you. Praise the Lord. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Second thing he says, I commend you to the word of his grace. The Bible says we have a sure word of prophecy. Sure, it is the Bible. If you, he, if you read the word of God and it speaks something concerning you, it is sure, 100% it will be fulfilled. Therefore, Paul is saying the church of Jesus Christ is one given to God. Secondly, given to the word of his grace. And this is what he says, the counsel, the promises of his unmerited favor. That you are given to the counsel of God. That it is not your thinking. You don't do things based on your thinking. You do things based on what God has said. You know, many of us, it's based on my interpretation. The way I read that scripture and I interpreted it, no, it is the way it's supposed to be interpreted right. That's the one you pick. Not how you feel it should be interpreted. The word of his grace. And this is what he says. His grace is able to build you up. To give you the rightful inheritance. Today, if I call, we have a miracle inheritance service. We'll be full to the back. But Paul is saying, this word of grace is able. No man praying for you. Nothing else happening for you. The word itself is able to give you an inheritance. The thing that... You know, the Bible says we are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Eh? Therefore, we are partaken the same things that Jesus Christ. Those things, you will find them through the word. Co-heirs with Christ Jesus. You only access your inheritance by the word of God. I told you, Jacob, last time, Jacob was spoken to. He thought it's the place that made God speak these promises to him. But those promises were being spoken to him because he was a child of promise. Because... God spoke to Abraham and said, I will give your descendants. So God had to use him. And he was, the blessing was upon him. The word of God will give you that inheritance. Not a man. Not, not gimmicks. Not stories. The word of God. But many of us, don't, we want someone to come and speak the word to us. I see the Lord is blessing you. The heavens are opening over you. And you are... You are that, that heaven should open in your bedroom where you read your Bible, where in your sitting room. When you're reading the Bible, you say, man, I see the heavens open for me. When you come here, we confirm. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. And we affirm the word of God. His grace is able to build you up, to give you the rightful inheritance among those who are sanctified. The church of Christ is sanctified, blood washed. That means you don't live for yourself anymore. You don't do the things you want. It's not about feelings. You know, today I don't feel like going to church. Man, discipline, wake up and go. Those who are sanctified, those who are set apart for God's purposes. And he tells them, I had no desire. He talks about a few things there. Verse 23, he had spoken about how you have been bought with a price that you do not become slaves to a man. Praise the Lord. Amen. That you do not become slaves to a man. Let me tell you, God will always use men of God. But don't be obsessed over men of God. You know, we have a place where a man of God is used by God until we make the man of God, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It has happened many, many times. Over history. It has happened many times. I don't know how many of you know William Branham. Mighty man of God. But people got to a place where they started almost worshipping the man. Let me tell you. I, I, don't, I know there is culture. But men, when you start bowing on for men, we start entering into risky places. I'm not saying we don't honor men of God. I'm saying we honor. That's the principle of the kingdom. By the way, whatever you don't honor, you will never receive from it. So if you have a pastor you don't honor, you have a problem. You honor the men of God. But when honor goes too far until it becomes worship, you're in problems. Praise the Lord. And you ought to watch yourself before you cross that line. Paul is speaking and he says that you watch yourself. Let me skip a few things. Number two, the church of Jesus Christ is centered on his word. That's verse 32. Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. That's why I told you, you can't always have favorite, favorite sermons. You can't always be listening to things that... You know, some of us are discouraged because someone corrected you. But now I don't feel... I feel like they don't love me. Even the Bible says, The Lord chastises those that he loves. Let me tell you how you know a parent that doesn't love the children, the one that doesn't discipline them. Because what he's doing, in the aim to, of not disciplining them, he's spoiling their future. It might not appear now, but in the future they will be indisciplined. People who can't live by rules. People who can't take a standard and live by it. That's what they're doing. So even God knows that. That's why he says, spare the rod, spoil the child. It's not that God loves children being beaten. But he's saying, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it apart from the heart. Not the word of God. So sometimes being rebuked is necessary. Being told you are wrong and this is the right way is important. We have to be a balanced people. People who can take a rebuke. Go sit down and check your heart and change where you need to change. When people can't be rebuked, it becomes a problem. Amen? The word of God. So that the servant of God will be thoroughly equipped in every good work. If you want to do the works of Christ, have the word of Christ in your heart. I know all of us are like, Lord, use me. Lord, but if the word does not dwell in your heart, how can, does God use you? Praise the Lord. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive, powerful. It is sharper than any two sharp, 
two sided sword cutting between soul and spirit between joint and marrow it exposes the outermost thoughts and desires let me tell you why people don't read the word of God it is exposing some things about them that's why it is easy to hear from someone who says what you love because when you read the Bible it will tell you hmm? those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God malice, jealousy, drunkards then you're like, my God, I think I feel, I feel, and the Bible is telling me I'm not going to heaven. You close it and you look for the guy who's telling you, it's okay, child of God, you will make it to heaven. No, you will not make it with sin. Praise the Lord. Psalms 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. For the word... 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. I tell you, the word of God in itself, it will offend some people. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. That we are an aroma of life to those who are living. And an aroma of, you know you can walk somewhere and people start feeling like something is disturbing them. Because the thing you are carrying is the life of God and they can't interact with it. Praise the Lord. But it is when the word of God is hidden in your heart. When you are given to fellowship with God. You are praying. Jesus speaking in John 17, 17 says, Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word. Your word is truth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 35, Paul talks about how he worked with his hands. And I think we, we spoke about generosity. The church is generous. This is how we also know people who have been touched by God. They are generous people. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 33, and with great ability and power, the apostles continually were testifying to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace, God's remarkable loving kindness, favor, and goodwill rested richly upon them all. There was not a needy person among them because those who were owners of lands, houses, were selling them and bringing the proceeds of the sales and placing the money down at the apostles' feet. Let me tell you, they, did they preach about a giving someone? They said they were doing what? Testifying to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Once God touches your heart, once you have an encounter, there is nothing you can't give. Praise the Lord. You know, we have a culture. The worldly culture today is for amassing things. There's a principle of the world that says, if you want to have more, keep more. Spend less and keep more. Then you will do what? Have more. But there's a Bible principle that says, there is one that scattereth and never lacks. <coughs> I, I want to ask you, even in your finances, which principles do you use? Am you're listening to coaches? You know, these days we listen to coaches. Financial coaches who are listening to heathen mindsets. Be frugal. Don't give. When you come to church, you're counting, you're offering like, this one is mine. No, we'll give God this one. Let me tell you, the Lord will direct your heart. Generosity is a sign of the church. I want to conclude here. The, the church of Jesus Christ is spirit-led. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 12. For just as the body is one and yet has many parts, all parts, though many, from only one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Holy Spirit we are baptized into one body, transformed, united, whether Jews or Greeks, Gentiles, slaves, free. He's saying all of us who have accepted Christ Jesus, by the Spirit of God, we've been engrafted into his body. Greek, Jew, Kikuyu, Luo. So, those things are no longer important. Praise the Lord. It is that now we are the body of Christ. That takes first priority over your tribe, your preferences, your thoughts, your patterns, your traditions. 
Praise the Lord. If you have a tradition based on your culture, based on the tribe you come from, that does not agree with the word of God, you overlook it because of the word of God. It is not of no importance to you. Romans 8 verse 9 says, However, you are not living in the flesh, controlled by sinful nature, but in the spirit. If in fact, the spirit of God lives in you, directing you and guiding you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. And is not a child of God. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, Scripture, not by Ganjo's interpretation. If you do not have the spirit of Jesus, the Bible says you are none of him. There is an identifying mark upon every child of God, upon the church of Jesus Christ. It's by the spirit of God. Even salvation. The Bible says the Lord draws people. How do you think he does that? By the spirit of God. That's why when we speak, the thing that convinces you is not our words. It's the spirit of God using our words. Praise the Lord. Verse 10 says, if Christ lives in you, though your natural body is dead because of sin, your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give you a mortal bodies, give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. I like the King James Version for this one. The day I read this scripture, my life changed. Period. King James says, as many, yeah, if the spirit, of, the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the same spirit, if the same spirit, it's not another spirit, same it shall quicken your mortal bodies. Same spirit. You see the same spirit you have? It's the same one that visited Jesus in the grave. Raised him from the dead. I told you last Sunday, if there was a way to stop the church, it would have been to stop the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And since that didn't work, nothing else can stop the church. Now, if Jesus, that the agency that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is the same thing that lives in you. I don't know, maybe I, I feel like we are still not grasping it. You know, we are saying there are a few people disturbing you. And the, the, the team we are going to send to destroy them is the same team that went to destroy Osama bin Laden. Would you be worried about your enemies? These guys went to Afghanistan in the middle of nowhere with info, precision and got a guy. The same people we are saying they're going to go deal with the guys in your village there. In fact, they are overqualified to be dealing with someone from your village. That's what we are saying. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. You are overqualified with dealing with the issues of life. That same spirit. That if the devil had an opportunity, Jesus would have never rose. That same spirit that brought him out of the grave, it is in you. The church of Jesus Christ operates by the spirit of God. Any congregation without the spirit of God, we are in doubt who they serve. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. And continues to say, so then brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but not to our flesh. To live according to the impulses of the flesh. Our nature without the Holy Spirit. Our nature without the... Let me tell you, the flesh was your way of living before the Holy Spirit came. When the Spirit of God engrafted you to the body, you received a new nature. Now, I know the biggest struggle is sin, the flesh. But how do you kill the flesh? Is you operate by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. How do you kill the flesh? You operate by the Spirit. 
If you're spirit-led, your flesh will not have an opportunity. Let me give you a good example. Joseph, I believe, was being led by the Spirit of God. Joseph had an opportunity to lie down with the wife of his boss. And she liked him. She's the one who came on to him. But the Spirit led him to flee. That's how I know he was being led by the Spirit of God. Because in your flesh, Joseph didn't have a wife. And I don't believe they were put, slaves were not mixed men and women slaves in the prisons. So he had never probably had sexual relations with a lady. And now it's not just any lady, it is your boss's wife, perfumed, showered, nicely dressed. <laughs> Am I making sense? Some of you are looking at me so, so seriously like, Pasi, did you just do? Let me tell you, it must have been the spirit of God. To run, it took the power of God to say, I will not sin against my God. Some of us can't run away from the small temptations that are, you know, that click to that website that is not godly. You should separate yourself with a gadget. You run to your bedroom and say, Lord, let me go to prayer. But that ability is only by the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. So he continues and he says, but if you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death, that's verse 13, the sinful deeds of the body, you will really live forever. If you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually. Now, I want to wanna give a hard statement right here. And I pray you understand me. Falling, I know there is a scripture we like preaching. I, I am sorry, but I'm about to destroy your theology for a minute. A, a righteous man falls seven times and he gets up again. Look for that scripture. Some of you have never even read it. You only hear it. Go search. Google is your friend. The scripture does not talk about falling to sin. It has never spoken of sin. It says, it starts by saying, O ye wicked men, lay not wait upon the habitations of the righteous. For though a man, a righteous man may fall seven times, he will rise up again. Is sin, is sin a wicked man? I know sin is wicked, but it's, in scripture, sin is not referred to as wicked. Wicked is people. It's people who have actions. So he says, O ye wicked, the wicked people who are plotting on how someone will fall. Because you are righteous and you are living right. They sit down and plan how they will steal from you. How they will bring you down. How they will corrupt you. And he says, lay not wait upon the habitations of the righteous. Because though a righteous man falls seven times, he will rise up again. Now, I want to tell you something. Falling in sin as a child of God is a choice. Yes, let me set it straight. It's a choice. Because it says... And this is, this is the problem. You can follow once. Repentance, by the way, is not asking for forgiveness. It's not, what is that word? It's not saying I'm sorry. It's not apologizing. That's the word I was looking for. It's not saying I'm sorry. That's not repentance. Repentance is turning away, changing your mind and your habits. So if today I fornicate, and tomorrow I, and I say I have repented, it means I'm not going back to fornicating again. Are we together? That's why the scripture says there that they are habitually putting to death. It's a habit. I'm habitually putting to death the deeds of the flesh. That's how you know children of God. That today you fell here, but I will not find you here again. If you're always at the same place falling, there's a problem about you. Watch out and be very careful. Because it means you do not have true repentance first. It means you have not changed your heart. You might say with your mouth because, you know, it's politically correct to say, you know, I fell. The Lord forgave me. I asked for forgiveness. But let me tell you, you're in a worse condition than the first time. But if you fall here and you fall there and you fall the other place, you are growing. Praise the Lord. My children, they had all of them. Anyone who has children, they all of them had to learn to walk. They were not born walking. Praise the Lord. They fell. 
But if today my daughter keeps falling the same way she was falling when she was two, hey, it's a concern. I go where? To ask the doctor, to look for a professional to explain. Why, why, why can't she walk? Is it true or not? Why? What is the reason? You know, we make sense of natural things, but we don't want to make sense of spiritual things because of the implication it puts on us. Why am I going to look for a professional to explain to me why a three-year-old is not walking? Because the expectation is that this three-year-old by now should be running. Paul speaks to the church and he says, I did not speak to, I can still not speak to you as mature people because you are babes. By now you ought to be teachers. There were people who had received the word of God. By now they should be the ones teaching. But there were still children being given the milk of the word. The church of God is always growing. It does not stagnate. The spirit of God does not stagnate. Praise the Lord. Oh, man. This conclusion is going to be a conclusion. We're going to do those five conclusions. I feel the spirit of God. So, this is what he says. That they are habitually put into death the sinful deeds of the body. And he says, if you do that, you will live forever. The guarantee is those who are putting away the desires of the flesh for the things of God, they are going to live forever. For all who are, you know, there's a scripture we I can hear your minds. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It is true. But they are not still sinning. Let me ask you. Let's reason for one moment. Even God says we reason. So let me ask you. What was the greatest problem that God had to send Jesus to the cross? It was sin. So this is God. All powerful. Yeah. Everything, all, all in all is contained in him. If, if God did not speak, there wouldn't any be anything here. Everything is by God. Everything. That all-powerful God, all-knowing God, all-omniscient God, said, I have a solution for sin. I will send my son Jesus as a lamb on the cross. This is God. Then he said, that will be the solution for sin. Now, I want to ask you, if the sacrifice on the cross is not sufficient to deal with sin, then do you think God is all-sufficient, all-knowing, all-powerful? His best sacrifice is not enough to deal with sin. Do you think then he's an all-powerful God? You know, sometimes we say some things. Now, I want to, we are reasoning, one minute of reasoning. Sidebar. All powerful God gave his best sacrifice to deal with the issue of sin. It means after you have received that gift of righteousness, you have been pardoned, bought by the blood of Jesus. If you sin, it's your choice. It's not that sin has overpowered you. That's why the Bible says there is no temptation too great that you cannot overcome. And the Lord has created a way out. So if you sin as a child of God, you made a choice. You made? Am I communicating? That's why he says, for all who are allowing themselves, verse 4, uh, verse, uh, verse 13, for all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. This is the theme for our year. For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading again to fear. So the church of Jesus Christ does not operate by fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. By which, by which, it means by that spirit, this is what we say. By which we cry, Abba, Father. It's because the spirit witnesses in us that we are children of God. Let me tell you. Let's not lie to each other. Anyone who does not have a witness that they are going to heaven, chances are they are not going. And a witness is not convincing yourself. Do you understand what I mean? 
You know, there is a place where you convince yourself, I know I'm going to heaven. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know I'm going to heaven. No, I need to, in witness is when you sit down. Something within you silently says, hey, I'm a child of God. I know my father. Praise the Lord. You see, this is the witness of the spirit in you. You know, we can promise you heaven, but we can't take you to heaven. It is only by the agency of the Spirit of God we can enter heaven. The Spirit himself confirms, testifies, verse 16, together with our spirit, assuring us that we are believers, are, we believers are children of God. And if we are children of God, then we are heirs also of God, fellow heirs with Christ Jesus. If indeed we share in his sufferings. Now, let me tell you, the church of God, though it is powerful, it also goes through suffering. Praise the Lord. That's not a guarantee that we'll never go through hard times. We go through tough seasons and situations. But you see, tough seasons don't... De you know, we should stop describing ourselves based on the season we are going through. Was Paul a servant of God when he was being stoned? When he had a shipwreck, was he a servant of God? In fact, God was speaking to him about in the shipwreck. He was not telling him, I will save you out of the shipwreck. He told him, tell them to be quiet down. None of them will die. God had the power to stop the shipwreck. But he says, none of you will die, but you, you will be wrecked. Then on top of that, he's sitting down trying to warm himself up. Because the waters are cold. You might die of, of, of hypothermia. And when he's doing that, a snake bites him. On top, you know, on top of the trouble of God spoke to you about the shipwrecking. A snake. Find, you know, of all the people, it comes to you, the servant of the living God. And bites you. But you see, he had a guarantee that he will go to Rome. So the word that you will go to Rome was more powerful than a snake bite. I don't know what God has given you as a word. If God said you will cross over to the other side, for sure, you will cross over to the other side. I want us to stop here. Praise the name of the living God. The church of God is spirit-led. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Even the Spirit of God leads you sometimes to temptations. Praise the Lord. You know, all of us, we want the Spirit of God to lead me in quiet paths. Sometimes there is the valley of the shadow of death. But the point is, I walk through. I am not camping there. Praise the Lord. That's the church of God. We walk through situations. Situations don't define us. We define them. The election does not define the church in Kenya. The church in Kenya is still the church of God. What people say, opinions of men have never defined the church. The church is blood bought, led by the Spirit. It's a victory. You know, the Bible says, and Jesus said, I am coming back for a spotless bride. Spotless. That's, that's the church of God. Blood washed. If the spirit can lead Jesus to temptation, if you go through temptation, stop talking about God has left me. At least if you are being led by the spirit, the comfort is you are being led by the spirit. And Jesus was not just being tempted by another like a small demon from Jerusalem there or Judea, you know. It is the devil himself. But God had created a way out for him. If Jesus, the son of the living God, needs to be led by the spirit, how about you? Jesus telling his disciples, he told them, I know you guys have fire. Eh? You want to go and tell people about me. But you wait. Stay here. Until the spirit comes upon you. Then you will receive power to be my witnesses. Everything the church of God does, it needs power. 
Children of God, let's learn to operate with power. Power is not shouting. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes we have Pentecostals, we have this thing of, I got the power. That day is the day you shout. Even your neighbors realize, hey, Kumba, this guy has been born again after five years. The power of God. You know, when you are praying for, a, you know, when you're casting out a demon, come out. And we have never heard you shout and we are wondering what has just changed. First one is always so quiet. That's not power. You know, Jesus, when he said, be still, I don't think he shouted. He was actually coming from sleep inside the boat. And he turned and said, be still. And he asked them, hey, you guys, for how long? Me, I'm thinking, his eyes were half open and half, half, half closed. For how long shall I be with you? You know, sometimes we think like he stood up and he said, be still. Maybe he was still seated down. Maybe. We don't know. But power is exercised by those who have the word of God and the spirit of God working in them. Praise the Lord. The spirit of God led Philip. And I know we want miracles. The Bible says, then the spirit of the Lord said to Philip, go up and join the chariot. The guy was moved by the spirit of God to disappear and appear somewhere else. It's by the spirit of God. You know, even in ministry, people are set apart by the Spirit of God. In the book of Acts, the Bible says, Paul, the Bible, as they were praying, the Lord said, set apart for me, Paul and Barnabas, that they may go and preach the gospel. I know there are people who, you know, we want to be serving everywhere. But what's the Spirit of God leading you to do? It's time for giving. I know we are generous people. We are a generous church. We don't need to be encouraged. Keep doing what the Lord has put in your heart. Amen? And the church of God will never lack anything good. Amen? Amen? As we grow, let's just be faithful with what God has given to us. Uh, let's give. We have the details for giving on the screen. If you want to give by plastic money, we have uh, ability to do that at the back. Our hosts will guide you on how to give using your card. And may the Lord bless you even as you give. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give with a spirit of excellence. I hope you have been blessed. For anyone with any inquiries, anybody who needs any prayer, there is information at the bottom of the screen right now. Reach out to somebody. We have prayer teams working round the clock, ready to listen to you. Call now and somebody will be on hold to pray with you. Again, if you're in the Nairobi metropolitan area, come out every Sunday. We meet right here at the Morgan Peak Hotel. We are excited that you could be a part of our service today. Any details that you may need, look at your screen right now and all the information on our social media pages. Please just join, subscribe, and listen out and look out for anything that we will be putting out there. We're excited that you could be a part of us. I hope this word has blessed you. Your life will never be the same again. God bless you until next time.